When people are doing their jobs right, you almost don't have to talk during surgery. It's fluid, and it's like when somebody's playing music and it's being done flawlessly. Watching Dr. D and Jana work together is like watching a dance. After doing it for so many years, he still gets so excited about every single surgery. When you're working and you start seeing a result take shape, it can be a really exhilarating experience when it's done well. We'll start by contouring the chin and the jaw. We'll do the angles first, okay? And then sure. uh, once we're done with that, we'll do the chin osteotomy. And I think she'll have a lovely result once this is all said and done. The way it's described to us, that people finally look in the mirror and they don't see somebody else staring back at themselves, it's really a special part of the job. I like experiences. I like things that are done well. It's not just medicine for me. I had an opportunity to sort of indulge that a little bit as I was building the office. He wanted a space where it was quiet. It felt safe. It felt welcoming. The sense of calm I get in my own office is, is really amazing, but we also translate that into an experience for patients because it's stressful. People don't know what to do. They don't know what to expect. Facial feminization surgery is really not only about physically changing their faces, it's about changing people's life. I don't think I picked my job, I think my job picked me. Through serendipity and a lot of preparation, uh, the right opportunities appeared before me. One thing that I think is particularly extraordinary about the training that Dr. Deshant Barley has had is how extensive it is, including craniofacial surgery, plastic surgery, and orthognathic surgery. So when you put those three elements together and you think about facial feminization surgery, all of those talents are utilized. Paul Tessier was instrumental in how to change the, the facial skeleton, and he had eight fellows. I was literally involved for years with uh, two of them very closely, Doug Oosterhout and the Arlen Denny. He trained for a year with Arlen Denny at Children's Hospital in Wisconsin. Following that, he trained in Paris with Daniel Marshak. He had a thriving aesthetic surgery practice in addition to a craniofacial surgery practice. I pretty much would probably have time to read one major textbook for my time in Paris, and I picked one book off the shelf. It was Aesthetic Contouring of the Craniofacial Skeleton, edited and published by my now associate in the practice, Doug Oosterout. It was just kind of this matter of coincidence that, that book was interesting me. And then after that, he traveled to Zurich and trained under Dr. Obergeiser for orthognathic surgery. It was a very busy center. We probably did two cases a day, you know, two to three days a week. And uh, they were letting me do the operations and assisting, which I, th I thought was an amazing uh, privilege. When you look at the pedigree and that level of high-end training, it's not just a simple residency. It's not just a simple fellowship. I mean, these were very, very exclusive fellowships to, to be chosen to participate in. So after leaving Switzerland, I had an opportunity to come to San Francisco and, and shortly thereafter I was introduced to um, Dr. Sun, uh, the chief of pediatric neurosurgery. So for cranial facial conditions in children, there usually requires a plastic cranial facial surgeon for the aesthetics part and a neurosurgeon to safely take the bone off. So it's a team. I brought some skills to the table that uh, were interesting to him that he thought improved the care that we could provide for children there. Having worked with him in the operating room, you know, doing many, many cases together, I know his skill sets, I know the position that he demands and the outcomes that he expects. We move heaven and earth to try to come up with the most interesting solutions for some of these cases and, and make sure that we did some really good work for the kids. One day I received a phone call from my beloved teacher, Erlen Denny. And he says, uh, Jordan, hey, I want you to write down a phone number and I want you to hang up the phone with me and call it. Don't ask me any questions, just do it. So I, 
I pick up the phone and here's Doug Ooster out on the uh, other end of the phone. And it, it was a little surprising because, you know, rewind, uh, you know, one year prior or 18 months prior, whatever, whatever it was exactly, you know, I'd been sitting in Paris reading the guy's book and it was, it was just kind of like, wow, you know, like you couldn't make this up. But he was uh, essentially ready to pass the torch and wanted to talk about whether I would be the right person to, to do that with. He had all the proper training. I mean, he had his creative facial training with you, and then he went to Paris, and he went to Switzerland. And all those things are extremely important in doing what I was doing in facial feminization. So that was a big plus. Exactly, and, and those, are, those are absolute requirements to have those specialized training. So we decided to have him come and watch me do surgery, and he seemed to really like what I was doing. A lot of fellowships that people train in are not very hands-on for the people that are getting training. When I took over from Doug, I did the cases. He was assisting me while I was doing them. I feel like it leapfrogged me decades in terms of my comfort level and experience with doing these cases. There was just nothing I had trepidation about, nothing anymore that made me nervous. And these are operations that would make almost any plastic surgeon very nervous and twitchy because of the sort of complexity of the things that we would do to people. The whole value of being able to do the bone surgery is that's the foundation where all the other shape and soft tissue and animation comes from. So it's a very complex thing that all ends up focusing on aesthetics. One of the great thrills in life is seeing the results of your education in the form of a student and have them become hopefully better than you are. And I really feel that Jordan is that person. He is a better, I'm totally convinced, he's a better surgeon than I was. And I want him to be better than me. I'm proud of that. I was very pleased to see the things that I thought were important that I trained Jordan to do in action and to see the result, which I thought was excellent. To have both of them in the room, it was kind of magical to see because it's that heritage of knowledge that was passed down to them and then they passed it down to me. And then particularly with Doug, uh, he was the one who essentially was the originator of, of the operations that we do now for gender surgery. He published a book that could teach people about the surgery, how it works, it could demystify some of the bits and pieces to it so they weren't so anxious when they came in but the book desperately needed a refresh. I feel like patients needed to see the work that I was doing as opposed to the work that Doug Oosterout was doing back in the day. We've essentially reworked and done a second edition of Doug Oosterout's book uh, with both of us as co-authors on the book. It's completely refreshed the information. It's illustrated new techniques. It's brought in additional chapters on uh, hair transplantation. It's updated chapters on orthognathic surgery. Um, it's completely updated photos. I think that this book should inspire confidence not only in the patient, but in their loved ones and family members that, that their patient's gonna do just fine. Coming to San Francisco was a very natural sort of place for me to be. I live in downtown, I work in downtown, and I operate in downtown, so I've kept my whole world very tightly knit. It's a good place for people who are traveling to have surgery. It's a place that I think a lot of people are gonna feel comfortable to come visit. It's an open, accepting place. I think people can be very comfortable here to be who they are, to be going through what they're going through. Every person on our team is really dedicated to, to making every patient feel welcome and that this is an environment where they can flourish. It's really rare to find a surgeon who's that talented from an aesthetic perspective, but who still, you know, genuinely cares about his patients. I didn't expect it to be as impactful it wasn't until probably at least three to six months later that I kind of was like, oh yeah, we actually, actually did do a fabulous job. This is really amazing. So I went back to the office after about a week and they were able to remove uh, most of the bandages. You know, you dream about it, you hope it's going to happen, but until it really does, you know, it's, just, it's a very emotional experience. I saw her, I saw myself and it was just, oh, I, I broke down crying. It was so beautiful and so exciting.
the right kind of job is a, is a thing that you have to do. It's not that you want to do it. If you couldn't do it, you would be in a worse off place. He's just truly excited about what he does, and he loves it. <laughs>